Yeah, I'll send it today. I'll send the notes today after the class. Okay, good evening, everyone. How are you all? Good evening, Anand Prakash. Where were you these days? Aditya Gawade, good evening. Good evening. Rajvardhan, good evening. Good evening, Sono. Nidhi Jain, good evening. Very good. I'm fine, thank you. So, how was your uh, Christmas celebrations yesterday? You celebrated? How were the celebrations? Great. No? In your campuses, they haven't celebrated Christmas? Two to three minutes and then we'll start the class, okay? Yeah, obviously the temperature is too much. Right. So yesterday we were discussing. Yesterday we were file. Yesterday we were discussing regarding uh, these things, right? So yesterday five. I don't know where the file went. Actually, no problem. I will send you the notes anyways. Right. So yesterday we were discussing these things, right? Uh, regarding the offline classes, even I have no idea, guys. Uh, maybe it will be online or offline, right? So now it is online. The only uh, reason is because I have been given many universities to teach right now. So I can't manage going uh, in a single day to uh, different universities, right? So that is the reason why we have kept it online so that online you can teach many universities right now. But uh, mostly after one, one and a half month, I might come there and take offline classes as well. Okay. So yesterday we were discussing regarding uh, these things, right? We were discussing regarding Clostridium tetany. And in Clostridium tetany, we discussed these three important things. And after that, we discussed about Clostridium botulinum also. Now tell me, just tell me this thing that where do you see uh, spastic paralysis? Batao, jaldi batao, where do you see spastic paralysis? Spastic paralysis is a feature of what? Anyone, any idea? Very good, very good, very good. Spastic paralysis you see in case of Clostridium tetany. Where do you see flaccid paralysis? Flaccid paralysis you see in Clostridium botulinum. Okay. 
placid paralysis you see in case of clostridium botulinum so clostridium tetani clostridium botulinum these are the two important things you need to know what is the neurotransmitter that is in the that is uh, uh, deficient in clostridium tetani what is the neurotransmitter that is very good gaba very good very good nidhi jain uh, ravina patel hasti very good fatima shiva very good raj very good so what is the neurotransmitter that is uh, deficient in the next one that is clostridium botulinum acetylcholine very good that is your acetylcholine right so that is your acetylcholine so now what we shall be doing is that we discussed about clostridium tetany we discussed about clostridium perfringens right uh, clostridium botulinum so third we will discuss right now about clostridium perfringens so the name itself is saying perfringes matlab it is perforating deep inside this bacteria will perforate deep inside your skin and once it perforates deep inside your skin it will eat up all the tissue which is located deep inside the layers of your skin once after eating up obviously gas bacteria will release gas called as hydrogen sulfide you know so wo gas release karega now do you think gas you know gas has a property to uh, go up against the gravity right so what will happen the gas all the gas will come up to the top layer of the skin so all the gas gets accumulated there leading to a formation of a gas bubble and that is what is called as a gas gangrene so this is how a picture of gas gangrene looks kitna severe hai dekho and the smell is very very worst very putrid smell okay very foul smelling uh, uh, gas you will have obviously hydrogen sulfide is a foul smelling gas okay so if you look here if you look here so a topic of discussion right now would be about clostridium tetany uh, sorry clostridium perfringens clostridium perfringens now within this clostridium perfringens just only two to three points are important which you need to know what is the toxin that is released by this bacteria the toxin that is released by this particular bacteria okay the toxin that is released by this particular bacteria is called as alpha toxin what is the name of the toxin the name of the toxin is alpha toxin so what is the uh, other name for this alpha toxin it is nothing but called as lecithinase okay what is it it is called as lecithinase the exact name is lecithinase and lecithinase is the one which is responsible for causing what gas gangrene which is responsible for causing gas gang okay now tell me will clostridium perfringens causes food poisoning all the species of clostridium perfringens will cause food poisoning okay so even this clostridium perfringens also causes food poisoning also causes food poisoning okay so how does the food poisoning happen in case of clostridium perfringens for example let us say you how many of you stay in flat none of you stay in flat right let us say you have bought some uh, meat from the market okay so you 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 brought for, you brought some meat from the market and finally you cooked it you know? so after cooking you had it with your friends and all but there is a little bit that is left will you throw it no what will you do you will put it there next day you will heat it and eat so clostridium perfringens the main route of transmission is a reheated meat dishes if you are eating reheated meat dishes then believe me that clostridium perfringens is right away okay so never ever eat a reheated meat dishes a reheated meat dishes will lead to this condition okay so this is this is very simple points which i wanted to tell you and if you look at this these blisters they are going to ask you are these blisters are painful or painless these blisters are painful blisters these are painful blisters and next important thing they are going to ask you is how does it smell it is a very very foul odor very very foul odor okay now is there any test that you can do to this there is one very important test see clostridium wherever i told you even it is diphtheria even sorry uh, even if it is botulinum or even if it is tetany i told you 
immediately you need to give to the patient antitoxin yes or no antitoxin contains what antitoxin contains your immunoglobulin i told you you remember right so here here what is the antitoxin that you'll give to the patient okay so just look here there is one very important test i want to discuss here this test is called as nagler's okay nagler's test so what is this nagler's test and all we will discuss right now and then we'll look at the real slide okay now pay attention to whatever i'm teaching you right now here they go i am taking an agar plate like this now after taking an agar plate uh, a patient is coming to me with all the blisters and all is the right now within those blisters there is gas there is bacteria and all so what i will do i will take the bacteria i will take the bacteria and i will apply it like this on the agar plate i will apply it like this on the agar plate here they go i have taken the bacteria and what did I do with the bacteria? I have just applied this. Achha. Right. So whatever I have done, you see, applied the bacteria onto this agar plate. Okay. I have applied this bacteria onto this agar plate. So what is this particular bacteria which you have applied to the agar plate? This is nothing but called as your Clostridium perfringes. Clostridium perfringes. Okay. Apply kya diya? Ho gaya. Now what I will do is that I will add antitoxin. Okay. I will also apply what? Antitoxin. Where will I apply antitoxin? See here. Exactly here I am applying antitoxin. You see. Now what I will do is that I will add few drops of antitoxin onto one side. Now you tell me. Clostridium perfringes jo hai, that will release a toxin. Now the thing which I have added is antitoxin. Now antitoxin and toxin, they both fight with each other, yes or no? And antitoxin has a capacity to neutralize this toxin. So that is the reason why exactly the place where you have added, exactly the place where you have added exactly here, you don't see any kind of reaction. Okay? But the place where you haven't added the antitoxin exactly at that place you see a lot of reaction lot of reaction like this okay so this kind of thing which you can see here actually a diagram i'm drawing it like this but this looks like a cloudy appearance just a cloud so then completely opalescence transparent and all so exactly a cloudy appearance you can see at this point this entire point where you haven't added this uh, antitoxin Okay, if this is happening, this test is called as what test? What is the name of this test, guys? Tell me. This test, this particular test over here is called as Nagler's reaction. This is called as Nagler's test. This is called as Nagler's test. Is everyone clear? All of you understood this? If you understood this, I will show you the real picture. Everyone, all the 65 members in the class, all of you understood, right? Very good. Abhi ye dekho. Look at the picture, right? Now you'll understand it completely. See here, observe it very carefully. Uh, forget about this one. Forget about the lower one. See, first what I've done, I have added bacteria. After adding bacteria, you see there is opalescence here. There is a cloudy appearance here. Yes or no? But do you see cloudy appearance here? I don't see any cloudy appearance. What does it mean? It means on this side, anti-alpha toxin, I mean antitoxin is added. On the right side, there is no antitoxin. Okay. On the right side, there is no antitoxin. So this, this condition you, I mean, this test you call it as, as I just now told you, Nagler's test. This test you call it as Nagler's test. Everyone is clear right now. If you get this picture and they ask you which side the antitoxin is added, will you be able to answer? Yes or no? Jaldi batao fada fad. Very good. Very good. Very good, Ayushi. Very good. Now, just look at this. Look at this question which was asked previously. A 28-year-old, a 28-year-old homeless man, okay, a 28-year-old homeless man, yeh dekho, homeless, Presented to the emergency department with pain and discoloration of his left foot. Pain and discoloration. 
he says that a few days ago he accidentally accidentally stepped on his piece of scrap metal so right now what thing comes into your mind you might think this might be a case of tetanus you know while walking across a parking lot with his bare feet he went to the emergency room and received a dose of tetanus toxoid vaccine for wound prophylaxis okay last night he suddenly felt onset of pain at the bottom of his left foot and states that severe pain that spread diffusely to the dorsum of this foot as well okay temperature kitna hai 38 which is normal okay pulse is also fine respirations are fine blood pressure is 108 by 58 thoda hypotensive a patient and on physical examination the patient's left foot exhibits the findings in the figure a ye dekho you see what is this is it looking like a tetanus or is it looking like a gas it is looking like a gas okay it is looking like a gas so next important thing is that which of the following organisms is most likely responsible for this patient's current condition gas releasing bacteria is very good clostridium everyone should answer very good clostridium perfringens that is your clostridium perfringens i hope all of you are clear with this everyone is perfectly clear right very good now let us go on to the last question here a microbiology student a microbiology student was given a swab swab jante ho na swab containing unknown bacteria okay swab matlab wo jo earbud hote hai na in the same way there are swabs which are longer basically which are used for covid okay you put it inside the nose and then put it back into that uh, uh, bottle uh, sorry uh, that socket or whatever it is and then you take it to the lab right so that is that is called as a swab Con this swab is containing what unknown bacteria he don't know what bacteria is that taken from the wound of a soldier and asked to identify the causative agent she determined that the bacteria was gram positive see gram positive spore forming bacilli what did i tell you there are only two species which form spores one is called as bacillus species and the other one is called as clostridium species if you remember hai ki nahi but had difficulty narrowing it down to specific bacteria next test he performed was nagler's test in which she grew the bacteria she grew the bacteria on a plate made up of egg yolk okay which would demonstrate the ability of the bacteria to hydrolyze the phospholipids and produce area of opacity half of the plate contained a specific antitoxin which prevented the hydrolysis of phospholipids while the other half did not contain any antitoxin what is it talking about ye dekho this is the plate half of the plate there is antitoxin so yahan pe antitoxin hai yahan pe antitoxin nahi hai so where there is antitoxin the bacteria did not spread where there is no antitoxin there is an opacity region okay cloudy region abhi this test is called as what this test is called as nagler's test and where do you see this nagler's test you i mean what what was the toxin toxin batao toxin kaun sa hai what was the toxin very good very good it is alpha toxin alpha toxin very good fine these are the maximum questions that can be asked you know so sirf only two topics are there over here either they can ask you about uh, um nagler's reaction or they can ask you about the toxin and all okay or what this is does it cause or picture dekhe they might ask you what is the problem here that's it okay right the next important clostridial species which we shall be discussing right now is Clostridium difficile. Clostridium difficile causes a condition called as PMC. PMC मतलब pseudo membranous colitis. Pseudo membranous pseudo membranous colitis. Okay, so it causes a condition called as pseudo membranous colitis. Now Clostridium difficile releases what toxins? Clostridium difficile releases two important toxins. One is called as toxin A. Another one is called as toxin B. These two toxins together will cause pseudo membranous colitis. Pseudo membranous colitis means you see a lot of fatty fat that is getting deposited on the colon here. You see inside the endoscopic image. 
So this is the initial stage and uh, later on is a severe form. Okay. So this is what is called as pseudo membranous colitis. Thus, max to max, they're going to ask you, disease is hai, toxins, what are the toxins? Now, all of you understood all the clostridial species, yes or no? Jaldi batao, fata pat. Everyone understood, right? Very good. Very good. Now, let us move on to repeat. Repeat which one, Sultan? Last one here. Last one, Sultan here. This is Clostridium difficile, uh, which causes pseudomembranous colitis. Pseudomembranous colitis in the sense within the colon, you see the membranes that are formed over here right with yellow plagues everywhere right so this is caused by two toxins one is called toxin a and toxin b that's it okay right so the next important topic which i'll be discussing right now is very 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 important for you what is this topic which i'll be discussing right now will come in your physiology it will cover up your pathology it will cover up your internal medicine jo padoge later on it will also cover up in internal medicine mein mainly gastroenterology part may cover hoga. and and the last important thing is it will even cover up within your micro part okay so what is that the name of the topic is helicobacter pylori helicobacter pylori okay guys tell me whenever you are eating spicy foods okay what will happen within the stomach? What are formed in the stomach? Batao, spicy foods kane ki se? Krishna Bharatwaj is telling ulcers. And Janvi peptic ulcer. Burning. Yeah, burning will be there. Burning to hoga. Spicy foods kaane se, when you eat spicy foods, right? Peptic ulcers do not appear. Keep this thing in mind. Very good, Reno. Peptic ulcers do not appear when you eat spicy foods. Peptic ulcers will happen because of H. pylori only, okay? Spicy foods might, spicy foods might cause electrolyte imbalance, right? It might draw all the water from your intestine or what, whatever it is. But H. pylori is the one which causes peptic ulcers, not spicy foods. Okay. If a patient who is having peptic ulcer, if he eats spicy foods, then that condition might aggravate. You know? That condition might increase. The, the symptoms might increase, but normally H. pylori causes peptic ulcer disease. And if you ask me, where are the ulcers more common? Ulcers can be seen in stomach, which are called gastric ulcers. Ulcers can be seen in duodenum, which are called as duodenal ulcers. If you ask me, which is where is the more common ulcers that occur? Don't put it as gastric ulcers. Duodenal ulcers are more common than gastric ulcers. Ye cheez yaad rakho mind. Okay? Clear? Right. Let us discuss about this helicobacter pylori. Coming to this helicobacter pylori, the first important thing I want to tell you is that this is a gram-negative bacteria. This is what a gram negative bacteria. Second important thing I want to tell you is that this release, this is, uh, it, it almost releases all the enzymes. Okay. It releases urease. So I'm writing it as urease positive. Okay. Third important thing, it releases catalase. So I'm writing it as catalase positive. Fourth important thing, it even releases oxidase. So I'm writing it as oxidase positive. And fifth important thing, now, ye batao, ye spore forming hai ki non spore forming hai. Jaldi batao. Jaldi, jaldi, jaldi. Very good. This is non spore forming. Only two species form the spores, which I've already told you. This is non spore forming. Very good. So, this is non sporing bacteria. Non spore forming bacteria. Okay. Now, what is the function of urease? Urease kya karega? What will be the function of urease? See, urease positive since what? It releases urease. Okay. So, within your body, you have got urea. You know, every one of our body, we have got a waste metal called urea. So, urea, urea is usually converted into ammonia plus carbon dioxide. Who is converting it? Urease will convert. 
ureas will convert uh, urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide sir why are you teaching us biochemistry right now this link is very very important in the coming i will tell you re regarding the pathophysiology catalase positive kya bola tha? catalase positive organisms in the previous lectures i told you will convert h2o2 hydrogen peroxide into water plus half mole of oxygen this is done by catalase positive organism right next why it is called oxidase positive because it releases an enzyme called as cytochrome oxidase it releases an enzyme called as cytochrome oxidase that is the reason why you call it as it is oxidase positive is everyone clear with this so far perfectly clear right cytochrome oxidase so you called as oxidase positive now all of you sit back and relax i hope you are doing that only right now okay whatever it is now i'm going to teach you normally what how acid is released whenever you are eating food when you eat the food uh hcl is released right this hcl will uh completely digest the food not completely 70 to 80 percent of digestion will happen with the help of hcl right how is this digestion happening in you and me i will discuss right now okay after that once this bacteria will enter into my body then how these mechanisms are going to change that also i will discuss okay just watch whatever i'm teaching you now just look here let us say this is the stomach this is the stomach right now what i'm telling you is that lining the stomach you have got these structures these are called as gastric rugae all of you know these are called what gastric rugae lining your duodenum also you have got rugae these are called as duodenal rugae okay now what i'm doing is that i will cut down only one piece of rugae from here and i will draw it on the right side here they go so this is the rugae which i was i am drawing here okay so this rugae is called as gastric rugae now this gastric rugae is having two important things an elevation a depression again an elevation and again a depression this depression is called as gastric pit what is it called as it is called as gastric pit okay next important thing is that you have got endothelial cells like this um, sorry these are not endothelial cells these are epithelial cells okay so you have got epithelial cells everywhere lining you have got epithelial cells Yadena, within your intestines and all stomach and all you have got layers innermost layer is called as what is the innermost layer Batao. four layers of the intestine we have got very good very good mucosa right and after that you have got submucosa then we have got muscular layer and the last layer is called as serosa from inner to outside. Mucosa may or three layers. Hai. Okay. One first layer is called epithelial layer. Second layer is called lamina propria. Third layer is called as your very good. Very good. Very good. Third layer is called as your muscle layer. Okay. So you called as muscularis mucosae. Okay. So there are three important layers. So mucosa ke andar sirf, okay, I'm not going into histology and all. H is yadrako, lining you have got epithelium. Okay? Now what I'm telling you is that there are some very, very special cells. Okay, there are some very, very special cells which you cannot ignore. Here they go. There are some very special cells in between. Okay, these special cells which are located in between, these blue color cells which are located in between are called as foveolar cells. What is the name of these cells? These cells over here are called as foveolar cells. Okay, these are called as foveolar cells. What is the function of foveolar cells? Foveolar cells release mucus. What will the mucus do? It will line and protect your intestine. Okay, this is the thing which you know. If you are going deep inside the pit, deep inside the pit, you have got some more specialized cells. For example, here they go, here they go, red color cells mil rahe na? These red color cells are called as parietal cells. Okay. After this red color cells, I'm drawing a pink color cell deep inside. This pink color cell is called as enterochromaffin cell. Okay. So what are the cells over here? This red color cell over here is called as parietal cell. 
the topic is little bit lengthy. I can't repeat it again. All of you just pay full attention here. Parietal cell. And uh, this pink color cell over here is called as enterochromaffin cell. Entero chromaffin cell. Okay, parietal cell and enterochromaffin cell. Now, let us leave this part here. Now, what we will do is that we will draw our central nervous system. So, this is your central nervous system, midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata and coming down all the way you've got your spinal cord. Okay. Now, what I'm telling you is that there are some neurons. There are some neurons that are coming from the cervical part. There are some neurons that are coming from the sacral part. Okay. There are some neurons that are coming from the sacral part. So, some neurons coming from the cranial part and sacral part. This is called as craniosacral outflow. So, your cranial region or sacral region, se jo neurons bar are, these are called as parasympathetic neurons. Okay. These are called as what? Parasympathetic neurons. Now, these parasympathetic neurons, look here. These parasympathetic neurons, they go all the way and some of the parasympathetic neurons are innervating your parietal cells. Now, some of the parasympathetic, I'm not, yeah. Some of the parasympathetic neurons, they are going and activating your enterochromaffin cells. All of you understood? Now, look here what is happening with you and me. But before that, I will also draw one more rugae. Here they go. You know, this is the rugae of the duodenum. Duodenal rugae. Na ye. Now, down here, I will draw duodenal rugae. I'm just drawing the rugae of your duodenum. Yeh duodenal rugae hai. Yaad rakho. Within this duodenal rugae, you have got two different types of cells here. Okay. What are those two different types of cells? One cell is called as G cell. Another cell is called as D cell. Okay. G cell ka naam, G cell matlab gastrin cell. The name of the cell is gastrin. D matlab delta cells. What is D? Delta cell. Till here, all of you understood. Sultan, you understood. Vamshi, Syed Fatima, Nidhi Jain, uh, Pankaj, Raj, all of you, all of you understood till here. Everyone. Foveolar cells, Sultan, foveolar cells release mucus. Ye dekho, pe bata hai tha na. Foveolar cells release mucus. Okay, mucus kya karega? It will line your entire stomach. Theek hai? Taki, even if you are drinking, uh, let us say, on empty stomach, if you are drinking tea, coffee, it won't damage your uh, in, uh, layers of the stomach. Okay, this is a, called as a first barrier. Not only that, even if any bacteria or anything enters also, it will wash up it. Right, so this is the thing. Till here, you understood. Now, what I'm telling you, just look here now. Every one of you pay full attention. Now, for example, uh, you have eaten the food. Okay? You had a very good lunch in the afternoon. Now, after having lunch in the afternoon, for digestion, will you run? Will you run 100 meters? All your family members will run 100 meters for digestion? No. You don't run for digestion. Okay? Because in running state, your sympathetic system will be activated. Sympathetic system will not cause digestion. Now, when you're relaxing, you sit right on the TV, AC, Aram Sabeto Sofa may watch the TV. So now what is happening? In this relaxed state, your parasympathetic system will be activated. This parasympathetic system will cause digestion of your food. Okay. So what is parasympathetic system? The neurons that are coming from the cranial part and the sacral part, craniosacral outflow. So ye activate hoga. Agar craniosacral outflow activate hua, if this got activated, so these neurons will be activated. Dekho, these neurons are activated. Here also these neurons are activated. And once these neurons are activated, what are they going to do? They will activate your parietal cells. Ki nahi? They will activate your parietal cells. And here they are going to activate your enterochromaffin cells. Yes or no? Now what I'm telling you is that parietal cells ka function. What is the function of? What is the function of parietal cells is that parietal cells will release hydrochloric acid. Okay. Parietal cells will release what? Hydrochloric acid. HCl. Okay. Very good. So this is a pure physiology part. Okay. 
Heparatal cells will raise hydrochloric acid. So then what is the use of enterochromaffin cells? Enterochromaffin cells will release what? It will release histamine. Enterochromaffin cells will release histamine. Okay. And what will this histamine do? See all of you now. On the surface of parietal cells, there are receptors here. receptors These are called as histamine receptors. So this histamine will go all the way like this. And this histamine will go and bind to the histamine receptors that are located on the parietal cells. So histamine is also activating your what? Parietal cell. And parietal cell will release what? HCL. So one is called direct activation. Another one is called as indirect activation. Till here you understood everyone. Tell me fada fad. Everyone. Very good. So they are activating and they are doing this. Now, now look what will happen. What will happen in a normal case. So this is normally which is happening now. So I'm relaxing. Parasympathetic system is activated. HCL is released. My food is getting digested. Okay. Direct, indirect. Direct matlab kuch nahi hai. The first neuron. Let me name this neuron as neuron number one. Yeah, neuron number two. Hai. This neuron is directly activating parietal cells. Right. So it is causing release of HCL. Indirect method matlab. If I want to release HCL, first I will activate enterochromaffin. And enterochromaffin will release histamine. And histamine will re go and activate parietal. And parietal is releasing HCL yeah, indirect enough, right? So that is why it is indirect method, indirect way. Chalo, jo bhi hai, whatever it is. Now, now look what is happening. Sometimes it might happen like this. Sometimes it might happen like this that uh, within your body, within your body, there is overactivation of parietal cells. If there is excess parietal cell if there is excess activation of parietal cell, kya hoga? Normally, sometimes there can be errors happening in your body. There is excess activation of parietal cell. Agar parietal cell excessly activate hua, then excessly what is released? There is excess release of HCL, yes or no? Right? Now, whenever there is excess release of HCL, acid ka level, acid content when it is increasing, what will be the pH? pH also will increase or decrease. Jaldi batao, fada fad. pH will increase or decrease. Very good, Vamsi. pH will decrease, right? Increase acid, it means pH will decrease. Clear? Now, now come to this part. Right now in the patient, what is happening? Right now in the patient, there is excess HCL. Okay? So this excess HCL, whatever is there, this excess HCL, whatever is there over here, don't you think this excess HCL will come all the way float down till the duodenum? Yape? It will float down till the duodenum. Yes or no? Once it will float down to the duodenum, which means yape. See, it is coming and floating down till the duodenum here. What is this that is floating down? Excess amount of HCL. This excess amount of HCL, what will it do is that it will slightly activate your delta cells. Delta cells ko activate kiya. Abhi delta cells kya karenge? Delta cells will start releasing somatostatin. Statin matlab kya? Stasis. Stop. Okay. This somatostatin, what this somatostatin will do? This particular somatostatin will go up all the way. Kaha gaya somatostatin abhi? Haan. Here go. This somatostatin is going up all the way and this particular somatostatin, what will it do is that it will inhibit your parasympathetic neurons. It will inhibit your parasympathetic neurons here. Agar jo parasympathetic neurons are inhibited, parietal cell is no more activated, enterochromaffin cell is no more activated, so HCL release will be stopped. You understood this thing? Why this thing should happen? Agar jada HCL release hua, then your intestinal lining will be destroyed. So there should be some auto backup mechanism. This is the auto backup mechanism that will happen. Everyone understood? Yes or no? Jaldi batao, fata fat.
एवरीवन एवरीवन परफेक्टली क्लियर सुल्तान यू अंडरस्टूड वेरी गुड नाउ व्हाट विल हैपन दिस इज द नॉर्मल थिंग दैट इज हैपनिंग इन यू एंड मी ओके ठीक है सर टेल मी हाउ बैक्टीरिया विल कॉज अल्सर्स how will bacteria cause ulcers how will bacteria cause ulcers is that let us say let us say like this that i have right now right now taken a lot of h pylori bacteria into my body theek hai so ye dekho ye bacteria jo hai na this particular bacteria is called as this particular bacteria whatever is here this is called as my h pylori okay now what this h pylori will do This H pylori right now within my stomach there might be urea urea हो सकता है stomach में है ना so what this H pylori will do is that this would convert urea which is present in my stomach into ammonia plus carbon dioxide okay अभी ये बताओ कि what is ammonia ammonia क्या है what is ammonia ammonia is an acid or alkali जल्दी बताओ ammonia is an alkali ammonia is an alkali एल्कली मतलब क्या राइट नाउ विद इन माई इंटेस्टाइन राइट नाउ विद इन माई स्टमक आई एम ड्रॉइंग इट विद्लू डॉट्स ओवर हियर विद इन माई स्टमक देर इज एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ एल्कली एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ अमोनिया एक ही नहीं अभी दिस एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ एल्कली और अमोनिया डोंट यू थिंक इट विल पास डाउन टिल द डिओडिनम ऑब्वियसली इट विल पास डाउन टू द डिओडिनम सो वेन दिस एक्सेस एल्कली और अमोनिया इज पासिंग डाउन टू द डिओडिनम वॉट विल हैपन This will activate your G cells, okay? And G cells, क्या करेगा? G cells will start releasing what? Gastrin. And what this gastrin will do? This gastrin will go all the way up. It is going all the way up like this. One thing gastrin will do is that it will go and activate your enterochrome affin cells. Next, gastrin will go and it will also go and activate your parietal cells. अगर इंटरोक्रोमाफिन सेल्स और पेराटल सेल्स एक्टिवेट हुआ देन व्हाट विल हैपन इंस्टेड ऑफ एल्कली एक्सेस हेचसीएल इज रिलीज्ड यू आर गेटिंग इट एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ हेचसीएल इज रिलीज्ड नाउ इफ द बैक्टीरिया इज मोर इफ द कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ बैक्टीरिया इज टू हाई तो क्या होगा एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ यूरिया विल बी कन्वर्टेड टू अमोनिया मतलब द लेवल्स ऑफ अमोनिया इज इंक्रीज टू मच इट मींस माय एंटायर स्टमक इज बिकमिंग कंप्लीटली अल्कलाइन अगर कंप्लीटली अल्कलाइन है तो फूड डाइजेशन होगा कि नहीं होगा इट वोट डाइजेस्ट सो ऑटो बैकअप मैकेजम विल हैपन इन माई बॉडी वॉट इज दैट एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ एल्कली विल कम डाउन एक्टिवेट योर जी सेल्स स्टार्ट रिलीजिंग गैस्ट्रिन ये गैस्ट्रिन जाके क्या करेगा पेराटल सेल्स और एंट्रोक्रोमाफिन सेल्स को एक्टिवेट करेगा एंड इट वुड रिलीज एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ एच सी एल एंड दिस एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ एच सी एल विल डैमेज योर इंटरस्टाइनल लाइनिंग लीडिंग टू पेप्टिक अल्सर डिसीज ऑल ऑफ यू अंडरस्टैंड everyone perfectly clear now you understood how how this patient will have peptic ulcer disease with the help of h pylori yes or no jaldi batao everyone very good very good very good very good very good all the 64 students are understanding 64 में तो एटलीस्ट फाइव टेन मोर देन दैट बस ओपन करके रखे होंगे ऐसे कि ऑल ऑफ यू आर वाचिंग द क्लास ऑल द सिक्सटी फोर एक बार हाई बोल दो ऑल ऑफ यू आर वाचिंग द क्लास वेरी गुड चेलसी चेलसी यू आर इन द क्लास यू आर नॉट आंसरिंग जाके फ्री कहा गए इतने दिन ओके यू गाइस आर साइलेंटली वाचिंग द क्लास राइट चलो ठीक है आई लव दैट सो दिस इज द नॉर्मल थिंग दैट इज हैपनिंग ओके दिस इज द नॉर्मल थिंग दैट इज हैपनिंग नाउ नाउ गाइस यू टेल मी ये देखो यू टेल मी दिस थिंग फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट इन दिस पेशेंट दिस रिसेप्टर व्हाट एवर आई टोल्ड यू ये रिसेप्टर कौन सा है दिस इज अस्टमाइन रिसेप्टर राइट यू नो वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस हिस्टमाइन रिसेप्टर हेच टू रिसेप्टर H2 receptor. Now, right now, one thing I can do is I can kill the bacteria. Okay, I can kill the bacteria. For that, what will I use? I will use antibiotics. First important thing. 
second important thing what i will do second important thing i can do this thing that problem yahan pe kya hai what is the problem problem is ye histamine release ho raha the histamine is getting released and going and attaching to the parietal cells and cause reeling of hcl so if i give such a drug theek hai if i give such a drug which will directly go and block this h2 receptor ye h2 receptor ko block kar diya if it will block this h2 receptor do you think histamine will go and bind there histamine will not give me a second guys just give me a second sorry just give me a second right so it will it will this drug will go and block this h2 receptor so can you think histamine will go and attach there no if histamine is not attached parietal cell will be activated no parietal cell activate nahi hua to hcl release hoga no so can i give such drug in peptic ulcer disease and can i tell you the name of the drug is h2 blocker h2 blocker matlab jo rantac lete ho na all of you know you take rantac tablets hai na what is a rantac tablet Rantidin, Femotidin, right? These Rantac tablets are nothing but your H2 blockers only. Clear all of you? Now, जो already damage हो गए उसके लिए क्या? For that, what I will do is that I will give gastric protectors. Okay? So what these gastric protectors will do? It will increase the mucus secretion so that the lining of the stomach, everything will be formed properly. Okay? So these things in pharma you will study anyways. चलो let us continue right now till here all of you understood the mechanism of h pylori right now what i am telling you is that uh, let us say a patient is coming to me telling that doctor i have gastric ulcers now how are you telling this i have seen in the internet theek hai gastric ulcers hai karke as a symptoms hai the same symptoms i am also having this okay fine so what you will tell the patient is that first we will do one test called as um uh, what we will do is that i will take a cup within this cup i will pour urea mera urea nahi waisa urea solutions to get you will get it i'll give this urea to you you drink this urea okay if really there is bacteria listen carefully patient drank urea if really there is bacteria in my stomach what will happen the urea which i drank right this bacteria will convert that urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide और कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड गैस को मैं पास करूंगा बाहर ये सो नो आई विल रिलीज द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड गैस एंड इफ यू चेक दैट द कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड गैस व्हिच हैव पास्ड द लेवल्स ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड आर हाई इट मींस देयर इज बैक्टीरिया इनसाइड ऑल ऑफ यू अंडरस्टूड दिस टेस्ट एवरीवन अंडरस्टूड व्हाटएवर आई टोल्ड यू जस्ट नाउ दिस मैकेनिज्म आई एक्चुअली टोल्ड यू दिस पर्टिकुलर मैकेनिज्म दिस मैकेनिज्म आई मीन ये देखो दिस वन आई टोल्ड यू दिस मैकेनिज्म ओके सो दिस टेस्ट this test you will explain to the patient and tell this test is called as urea breath test urea breath test and finally sir when you breathe the air out i will calculate the amount of carbon dioxide now patient is really smart over smart now what patient will do is that i have studied in my childhood that we exhale carbon dioxide now you are telling me that you will measure carbon dioxide and uh, uh, how do you think the results will be so accurate क्योंकि वो वाला कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड नॉर्मली एक्सेल्ड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड हो सकता है हाउ डू यू थिंक ओनली बैक्टीरियल कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज दिस सो नाउ व्हाट यू आर डूइंग इट टू डू इज दैट ओके सर इफ यू आर नॉट इफ यू आर नॉट बिलीविंग दिस टेस्ट व्हाट वी विल डू इज दैट वी विल पुट एन एंडोस्कोप इनटू योर स्टमक आफ्टर पुटिंग दैट आई विल टेक अ स्मॉल पीस ऑफ योर स्टमक लाइनिंग ओके आई आफ्टर टेकिंग दिस स्मॉल पीस ऑफ स्टमक लाइनिंग व्हिच वी आल्सो कॉल्ड एज बायोप्सी i will put it under the microscope and then i will show you the bacteria a patient is telling that yeah this is very nice so patient is asking what kind of endoscopy you will do this endoscopy which i will send the endoscope only till the stomach is called upper gi endoscopy okay so upper gi endoscopy upper gi endoscopy along with that i will also do biopsy ठीक है अपर जी एंडोस्कोपी बायोप्सी कर लिया मैंने सो लेट अस से आई हैव टेकन इट इन एन अगर प्लेट लाइक दिस ये देखो सर दिस इज योर टिश्यू व्हिच आई हैव टेकन नाउ द पेशेंट इज आस्किंग वेयर इज द बैक्टीरिया 
in the microscope i cannot see now you need to tell you need to tell the patient that you will see bacteria only when you add a color and that color what is that color which you add anyone right so patient is telling patient is telling i want to look at a bacteria now you will tell not green color uh, i will come to that in a minute you will tell the patient sir if you wanted to look at a bacteria bacteria flagella are very thin now you are understanding bacteria flagella are very thin everything is very thin what we will do is that first hum salt add karenge iske upar okay what is the salt we will add first we will add silver salt silver salt so this method you call it as silver salt impregnation method yaad hai you want now very good now after adding silver salt all the structures of the bacteria the flagella and all they will swell up swell hone ke baad now i will add a stain called as warthin starry stain warthin starry stain now after adding this warthin starry stain you are very very much welcome to look at your own tissue after adding warthin starry stain this is how it looks normally gastric mucosa kaise hona chahiye it should look like gastric rugae but yahan pe gastric rugae to nahi dikh rahe mujhe what has happened ye dekho i can see only one gastric rugae yahan pe gastric rugae is damaged the gastric rugae here is also damaged now the patient is asking sir what are these black color things what are these black color structures over here ye dekho what are these black color things over here these black color things are nothing but the bacteria h pylori bacteria and this staining method is called as warthin starry stain now the patient is happy all of you understood warthin starry stain i discussed why are you not answering i don't know i have discussed it in staining methods special staining methods mein maine discuss kiya yaad hai all of you everyone i want you to answer i want you to only few students are taking very good part in the class i want all of you to answer i have the ppt is also ready with me theek hai aaram se main kya karunga i will open that ppt everything will be written there just i will underline everything and i will read and go pathophysiology samajh mein nahi aayega nothing no clinical approach nothing you won't understand anything and at the end if they ask did you teach microbiology yes i taught microbiology ye dekho they don't know what is clinical approach and all that is why i am telling you answer actively in the group so that i will feel that i have to teach you more right let us do this particular question here guys let us do this question a 45 year old woman so acche se suno 45 year old woman who has a history of mild epigastric pain epigastric matlab ye dekho in anatomy i taught you stomach uh, the entire abdomen you divide into nine regions this is called epigastric yahan pe mesogastric uske niche hypogastric region epigastric region is the place where you have your stomach i taught you in anatomy i came there and i taught you in anatomy if you remember if there are any ksm students over here i even i even made someone to sleep on the table and then i have taught you everything right which seems to have gotten worse from the last month her pain is most ye dekho one important thing guys uh, i told you uh, gastric ulcer gastric ulcer bola tha aur ek hai duodenal ulcer bola tha duodenal ulcer bola now patient is telling that uh, doctor i have gastric ulcer or doctor i have duodenal ulcer now how will you how do you know that you have gastric or duodenal ulcer he is telling the doctor this is my stomach so gastric ulcer yahan pe duodenum hoga so duodenal ulcer no how you need to say is that very 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 good fatima perfect after the meals if the patient is having pain that is gastric ulcer okay after the meals if the patient is having pain that is gastric ulcer okay after the meals if the pain is reduced that is duodenal ulcer dekho 
two important things very very important to remember after the meals if the patient is having pain gastric ulcer after the meals if the patient the pain of the patient is reduced after the meals that is duodenal ulcer okay that is the reason why duodenal ulcers the pain starts in the midnight midnight you don't you don't sleep and eat right midnight you sleep so in when you are sleeping it means your stomach is empty that will aggravate the pain jaldi utke kya karna chahiye you go to the kitchen and eat the food the pain will be reduced and that is called duodenal ulcer okay so look at this question here look at this question 45 year old woman has a history of mild epigastric pain she seems to have worsen over the last month her pain is more severe several hours several hours after a meal after a meal she is having a pain and is somewhat relieved with over the counter antacids the patient denies abnormal taste in the mouth or radiating pain she does not take any other over the counter medications uh, she denies bleeding anemia unexplained weight loss and denies a family history of malignancy theek hai jab bhi cancer hota hai na first thing patient will have blood in the stools the patient can vomit the blood patient will have unexplained weight loss wo bolte hai ki the doctor within 3 uh, months i lost about 10 kg and all i am not even feeling hungry ye these are the alarm symptoms of cancer so which of the following is the best next step kya karoge batao next important step see the endoscopy no never ever go for invasive directly na 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 no next best step <laughs> guys you know if a patient is coming to you telling that doctor i have pain in the appendix region okay we will do an operation and diagnose whether it is appendicitis or no will you tell like that directly don't go for invasive methods pehle non invasive methods chalte okay the first what is the test you do very good urea breath test agar urea breath test positive nikla then we will go for upper gi endoscopy with biopsy clear all of you a 49 year old male complains of abdominal discomfort that worsens following the meals a gastric biopsy reveals gastric biopsy reveals 2 cm gastric ulcer and immunohistochemical staining demonstrates the presence of rod shaped bacterium in the gastric mucosa which of the following is used batao what will be the answer which of the following is used by the pathogen to neutralize the gastric acid gastric acid ko neutralize karne ke liye pathogen will release what very good very good very good very good very good romita very good sonu hasti very good ureas now you understood this everyone understood it perfectly yes or no jaldi batao perfectly clear right right these two questions are for you if you understood if you understood this the topic you will answer these two questions okay now let us enter into the next important thing now what we'll do is that gram positive bacteria is divided into three important things this table i have already written है ना एक होगा बेसिलाई एक होगा बेसिलाई अनदर वन इज कॉल्ड एज कोकाई अनदर वन इज कॉल्ड एज ब्रांचिंग फिलामेंट्स मैंने बोला था ब्रांचिंग फिलामेंट्स बेसिलाई इज इन टर्न डिवाइडेड इनटू टू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स वन इज कॉल्ड एज एरोबिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स अनदर वन इज कॉल्ड एज एनारोबिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स ये भी बोला था विद इन द एरोबिक ऑर्गेनिजम्स वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द बेसिलस देयर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज कोरिनी बैक्टीरियम and another one is called as listeria listeria coming to anaerobic we we already discussed about clostridia we already discussed about clostridia so the mnemonic which you can remember over here very good very good jack this is black b stands for bacillus l stands for listeria a stands for anaerobic c stands for corneobacteria 
So the topic now we shall be discussing the bacteria which we shall concentrate is listeria. Very, very important. Okay. So anyways, we, we will we cannot discuss all the bacteria. Remember this thing. There are some 250 to 300 bacteria which are present in your microbiology textbook. If I keep on discussing only bacteria, then you won't complete mycology and all. We will discuss only those bacteria which are so far repeated for NEAT PG, which are so far repeated for FMG. Okay? This would cover most of the part. And if you are perfect with this part till the end of your sixth year, when coaching join, there the remaining part will be taught. It would be uh, kind of easy for you. Don't worry about that. Okay? So, next important thing is Listeria monocytogenes. Listeria monocytogenes. Now, what is this Listeria monocytogenes? Now, coming to this, the first important thing. First important thing is that if you see Listeria, the first letter is L. You know? Now, if you put a uh, line here, this becomes T. T stands for what? Tumbling motility. T stands for what? Tumbling motility. Second important thing is it is a gram-positive bacilli. It is a gram-positive bacilli. Okay. And third important thing, spore-forming, non-spore-forming, Badao. It is a non- Very good. It is a non-spore-forming. Very good. Non-spore-forming. Fourth important thing, it is aerobic. We have discussed It is aerobic. Fifth important thing is, it is catalase positive. It is catalase positive. Right? And sixth important thing is, sixth important thing is, it shows beta hemolysis. Now, ye batao, beta hemolysis kya hota hai? Beta hemolysis is complete hemolysis, partial hemolysis, or no hemolysis at all. Incomplete hemolysis. Batao. Very good. Complete hemolysis. Now, let us look at the transmission of this bacteria. Now, let us look at the transmission. Coming to the transmission of this, the first important thing is that, you know, there are two types of milk. One is called as a, one is called as the pa pasteurized milk. Another one is called unpasteurized milk. Okay. So if you are drinking, if there is ingestion of unpasteurized milk, if there is ingestion of unpasteurized milk, then you might end up having what? This particular listeria. Second important thing is that during normal vaginal delivery, for example, let us say mother is having listeria infection. Okay. So this listeria infection will be on the vaginal lips. Okay. On the vaginal lips. Now, as the baby is coming out of the vagina, first he'll put his head out. As he's putting the head out, the woman's uh, vaginal lips will come in contact with the face of the baby. So when it will come in contact with the face of the baby, what is going to happen? The bacteria, whatever is there, it will stick onto the face and this would cause listeria during the birth. Okay. Another way of transmission is vaginal transmission during birth. Vaginal transmission during birth. Okay. This is a second important thing. Now, if you look at this, this is how the uh, listeria is. Or listeria ka flagella deko. Everywhere. Listeria flagella is everywhere. If the flagella is all around the body, you call this condition as what? What is this uh, type of flagella? Peritricus flagella. Very good. Peritricus flagella. Ye deko. You see this? This is peritricus flagella. Peritricus flagella. Now, in the exam, they are going to ask you one very important question. What is the pathogenesis? Okay, may I tell you pathogenesis? Kya hoga? All of you, all of you, just listen to whatever I'm teaching. Don't write anything, okay? So, this listeria, I am drinking a milk. Within the milk, there is listeria. Listeria right now entered into my intestine. Now, what I will do is that I will draw one cell of the intestine. Here they go. This is my intestine, okay? Uh, lining the intestine, you have got cells on either sides. Yes or no? Cells on either sides. In the center, you have got lumen. Anna? In the center, you have got lumen. Now, what we'll do is that we will draw one cell of the intestine here. Here they go.
So this is a cell of intestine and let us draw another cell also. Okay. So this part, whatever is, whatever I'm drawing over here, right? This entire part is your lumen. What is this entire part called as? This entire part, which is in the center is your lumen. Okay. So this part over here is your lumen. Now, all of you remember one thing that on the surface of these cells, so this wavy pattern you see, this is called as what? These are called as, they increase what? They increase the surface area of absorption. And these structures are called as villi, okay? So on the surface of this villi, this side is called as a luminal side. What is this? Luminal side. Kyunki ye lumen ki taraf hai na? Luminal side. There are two important receptors over here. What are those two important receptors? This is called as receptor E. Another one is called as receptor C, okay? Now you have taken listeria inside. Now very nicely, the listeria is here, here. And this listeria, this particular listeria over here, if you see, this particular listeria, if you see, it is having two important antigens or two important proteins on its surface. Here they go. So this is the listeria over here. Listeria. So one protein which it is having over here, and this is another protein which is having over here. So one protein name is called as internalin A. What is this? Internalin A. Internalin A. Another one is called as internalin B. Okay, kya hai ye? Internalin A and internalin B. Now what this internalin A and B will do? What does it do is that this internalin A and B will come all the way into the intestine. And you see it is trying to fit into this E and C receptor. Once it will fit into this E and C receptor, this bacteria is internalized inside. Internalized matlab, this bacteria will enter inside. This bacteria will enter inside right now. Once this bacteria will enter inside your cell, this bacteria is going to release three very, very important toxins. What are those three very important toxins? Ye listeria, hai na, it will release a toxin called as listeriolysin O. What is that? It would release listeriolysin O. Dusra toxin it releases is phospholipase A. Phospholipase A. The next toxin it releases is phospholipase B. So what are the three toxins? Listeriolysin O, phospholipase A, and phospholipase B. Clear? Now, what are these toxins? All these three toxins are called as pore-forming toxins. Pore-forming toxin. What do you mean by pore-forming toxins? What do you mean by pore-forming toxins is that they literally form pores within the cell wall. Here they go. Aren't they forming pores within the cell wall like this? See, there are holes. There are literally very big holes or very big pores that are formed. If they ask you what are the pore forming toxins in the exam, what will you tell? Listeriolysin O, phospholipase A and phospholipase B, which are released by this listeria organism. Clear everyone? Everyone is clear with this, right? Now what will happen? After releasing the toxins, now it is happy. Now what will happen is that within our body cell, within our body cell, there is a protein called as ACT A. Act A matlab actin A. Actin matlab jante ho na actin filaments actin. So that protein is called as Act A protein. All of you look here. So that protein is called as Act A protein. Now what this Act A protein will do? This Act A protein, this Act A protein will come and stick to the surface here. It will come and stick to the backside of the bacteria. Once this ACT A protein is going and sticking to the surface, A, this is ACT A. What this ACT A will do is that this ACT A is like a magnet. What it will do? Cell ke andar jitne bhi actin filaments se, no matter how many actin filaments are there, this ACT A will attract all those actin filaments. So what will happen? Like a magnet attracting the pieces, iron pieces, all these actin filaments, they come attached like this. All these actin filaments are coming and attaching. And once these actin filaments come and attach, this concept of actin filaments attaching there is called as actin polymerization. What do you call this? So all these are your actin filaments. 
all these actin filaments together they are forming what actin tail actin tail and this procedure is called as actin polymerization actin polymerization now what will happen with the help of this with the help of this actin filament now the bacteria this actin filament kya karega it will push the bacteria forward so the bacteria can very easily swim all the way into the cell like this okay so this bacteria now happily moves everywhere into the cell everywhere in the sense already it has released some toxins made some holes so this bacteria right now through these holes through these holes like this this bacteria is going to enter here they go this bacteria is going to enter through these holes and all of you know that here we have got what here we have got actin filaments and with the help of this this bacteria will enter into the next cell bacteria will enter into the next cell so in this way from one cell to another cell one cell to another cell it will keep on passing all of you understood and it keeps on damaging all these cells all of you understood this mechanism yes or no everyone uh actually in the exam no one will ask you mechanism the reason why i told you like this is that normally actin actin is present within the cell itself sultan within your body cell itself we have got actin filaments okay normally we tell these things right when we discuss about a topic a lot of times okay normally when you sit with your friends and discuss any about some random topic you keep on discussing for half an hour and all out of which the only there will be only one important point in that but later on after few months when i tell that word you will immediately understand acha ha us din humne ye discuss kiya so to make that aura i have discussed this actually ye zaruri nahi hai you need not to know the pathophysiology and all but all i want you to know is listeria when i tell listeria you think that should come into your mind is it will make holes in the cell it will create actin tail actin polymerization and it will pass from one hole to another hole that is all i want you to know okay so if i ask you what are the virulence factors what will you tell me what what are the virulence factors over here one is internal in a another one is internal in b another one is listeriolysin o another one is phospholipase a phospholipase b this is the last thing that they are going to ask you in the exam so these are the virulence factors these are the virulence factors this is what they are going to ask you in the exam so other than this nothing they will ask you now let us see what will happen when this will affect the person okay so let us start from the stomach let us start from the stomach let us say this bacteria right now is in the patient's stomach with the help of unpasteurized milk now first what will happen one the moment it enters into the stomach it will damage the stomach lining how abhi bataya maine it will make holes in all the cells yes or no so when it is damaging the stomach lining the patient will have a problem called as gastroenteritis gastroenteritis which is a vague symptom so inflammation of your gastric lining and all okay now from here with the help of portal vein ye dekho ye vein pata hai iska naam kya hai in anatomy i have taught you portal vein so with the help of portal vein this bacteria from here it will enter where next it is entering into your liver right now in the liver what does it do in the liver it will cause abscesses abscess matlab jante ho na whenever you get a heat boil you pinch that heat boil okay you you pop that heat boil so what will happen all the uh, pus everything everything will be drained out and that is called as abscess so within the liver what it is going to do is that it will form abscesses abscess in latin you call it as pio pio pus okay so it would cause pio granulomatous granulomatosis hepatitis granulomatosis hepatitis okay third important thing third important thing from the liver where it is going this is your inferior vena cava which is draining into your right atrium okay from the inferior vena cava it is entering into your heart from the heart it is entering all the way into your aorta it is entering into your aorta from the aorta it is reaching through the cerebral arteries into your brain once it enters into your brain 
in the brain it causes meningoencephalitis okay surrounding the brain what do you have meninges pehle meninges damage karega then it will enter into the brain so meningitis and encephalitis so you call it as meningo encephalitis meningo encephalitis and fourth important thing fourth important thing is that it can also enter down into your thoracic iota ye kya hai thoracic iota hai and all the way when it comes down this is called abdominal iota let us say there is one blood vessel that is going to the newborn neonate okay abhi surrounding this newborn surrounding this fetus surrounding this fetus there are two important layers so this blue color layer over here is called as amnion all of you know this the red color layer is called as chorion so one is called as your amnion another one is called as chorion so this bacteria will damage the amnion it will damage the chorion so you call this condition as chorio amnionitis what do you call this chorio amnionitis agar chorion or amnion damage ho gaya don't you think there will be abortion yes or no so that would lead to what abortion that would lead to abortion so this is another important thing which you need to remember okay that would lead to abortion fine chorion and amnion dono damage ho gaya chorio amnionitis has happened now the bacteria will enter right inside the baby once the bacteria enters right inside the baby it would cause a condition called as granulomatosis infantiseptica granulomatosis infantiseptica okay uh, just a minute i'll show you the picture of granulomatosis infantiseptica right chalo i'll put it in the pdf itself i'll put it in the pdf itself um, the photo is not going over here chalo whatever it is so it would cause what it would cause uh, granulomatosis infantiseptica so all of you understood guys all of you understood everything which i taught now yes or no everyone be fast jaldi batao everyone perfectly clear i want you to do the mcqs also mcqs are very 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 important guys so at any cost i want you to finish up the mcqs clear all of you so mcq part is very very important so just all of you type in the internet granulomatosis infantiseptica you will find the picture over there so i will send you the notes right now yesterday's and today's notes both the notes i will send it to you right now and i will also upload the videos once i get the link from the office so yeah this is all today also group uh, rajwardhan there is an there is a whatsapp uh, there is a uh, telegram group okay so the telegram group name is dr krishna sahit official just write it type it as dr dot krishna uh, sahit official okay 
first one first one is gastroenteritis sultan first one is gastroenteritis where it will damage your stomach wall okay so that is called as gastroenteritis right so all of you today also you have a biryani i could have no biryani for you all chalo so all of you thank you so much for joining the class uh, goodbye take care and love you all bye